Hi, and thanks for joining us for another one of Family Marines videos. My name's Tom. Now, the, the uh, title of this video is Learn How to Buy a Used Pontoon Between ten dollars and $15,000. Um, so we brought in a, a used pontoon today. Uh, this happens to be closer to that $15,000 range than it does the $10,000 range. Um, but what I want to do is kind of go through this boat and give you an idea of what you can get for say fifteen thousand dollars or ten or somewhere in the middle um, so the first thing that i want you to take into consideration when you're thinking about buying a used pontoon is whether you're buying it from a private party or whether you're buying it from a dealer now we all know that buying it from a private party it's an as is sale there is no recourse whatsoever and we've all heard the uh, sellers say oh yeah it runs perfectly and then after a month of owning it, you bring it in and we find all kinds of problems with the engine. And not that the, the seller was lying to you. In his mind, it was running perfect because he may not know what running perfect versus not running perfect really is all about. Okay? So he may be thinking that he's telling you the truth, but he just doesn't know. So buying a boat from a dealer, of course, you have recourse. Um, if you buy a complete piece of junk from a dealer uh, and he lied to you, um, you have recourse with that dealer. Now, most dealers aren't going to lie to you. Most dealers are going to go through the boat. They're going to make sure that the boat's in proper working condition, particularly the motor. And um, so, therefore, you're much safer buying it from a dealer uh, than you are from a private party. Okay, so now the next thing, of course, that you have to take into consideration is the year, the horsepower, the brand, the model, the color, the condition. Okay, so let's start out with year. Now this happens to be a 2010, and it happens to be a 22 and a half foot pontoon with a 70 horse Yamaha four stroke. Now, uh, because it's a 2010, uh, four strokes are very, very, very popular. Over 95% of the motors being sold in the United States today are four strokes. Um, the old two strokes, the oil burning two strokes, um, if this had one of those engines, it would be valued at considerably less because it's a two stroke. Uh, particularly the four stroke EFI, electronic fuel injection. Um, that's a much, much, much better engine than what a carbureted four stroke is. Of course, back in the day, the EPA required that all four strokes meet a certain emission standards. And when they put carburetors on them, they had to make the jet so small and tiny in order to meet the EPA com uh, compliances that it, be it started to have issues with the uh, carburetor jets. So therefore, most manufacturers went over to electronic fuel injection, which this one happens to be. Okay, the next thing to take into consideration is the brand. Now. You know, Bennington, Premier, Harris, there's some brands that are out there that are really top shelf brand manufacturers. And of course, there's some entry level brand manufacturers that are out there. Now, every one of these manufacturers makes different levels of pontoons. They make a Cadillac, an Oldsmobile, a Buick, a Chevrolet, a Saturn. Okay, for example, with Premier back in 2010. They built a Sun Spree, which is their entry level. They built a Sensation. They built a Sensation Limited. They built a Grand Majestic. Okay, so this one happens to be a Sensation Limited, which is kind of right in the middle of the models that they built back in 2010. So it's not their entry level pontoon, but then again, it's not their high level pontoon. It's right in the middle. Let's call it a Buick of pontoons really good quality, well-featured, upper middle of the line pontoon. Now, if this were a entry level pontoon that probably sold back in 2010 for about half the price that this one did, of course, we wouldn't have a $15,000 used pontoon. We'd have probably closer to a $10,000 used pontoon, especially if it had a two stroke. Now, two strokes really started to go away in the mid 2000s when um, the EPA said, okay, United States, no more oil burning two strokes. They had to meet the EPA uh, uh, emissions standards in 2005. 
and actually gave them a couple of years past that to get rid of the two strokes that were still in the marketplace. So 2005 and newer, mostly what you're going to see are four strokes, but you'll still see some two strokes that are out there. All right, getting back to the boat, um, some of the things that make this a more, closer to a $15,000 boat is the style on the interior, and we'll get to that. The diameter of the tubes, which is a 25 inch diameter tubes. Um, one of the things that this boat has, and you'll see this, you know, in, in, in really 2014 and prior is carpeting. Prior to 2014, everybody had carpeting. Now, of course, one of the downfalls of carpeting is it gets wet, it stays wet for a long period of time, it can get moldy and mildewy, it can create uh, uh, mold and mildew in the vinyl of the seats, it can corrode electronic components inside the boat. So that humidity uh, is not a good thing and we want to keep the inside of the pontoon dry when we have our cover on. Speaking of the cover, another thing to take into consideration is the co condition of the cover. This particular one happens to be in great shape. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no tears. There's no rips. There's a little bit of mold. Okay, this is pretty normal for a 10-year-old pontoon. Mold, of course, will deteriorate the, the material that the cover is made out of, and eventually it'll rot and tear. So we want to be really careful to get rid of the mold and mildew that may be on the cover. Take it to a, a laundromat and use their uh, industrial size washing machines and put some bleach and soap in there and wash the cover. It eliminates that mold and mildew. Now, as I mentioned earlier, condition of the boat is very important. Um, this particular boat is exceptionally clean for a 2010. As you walk down the sides, although it needs a bath, it could be cleaned up a little bit, as you walk down the sides, there's no dents, there's no dings. Look at the condition of the tubes. The tubes actually look brand new, and the reason for this is because back in 2010, Premier used a coating on the tubes to prevent oxidation. Now, 99.9% .9 of the pontoons out there did not use this, and the tubes are gonna look all stained and gray on the sides. But Premier back in those days did use the sealer to prevent the tubes from oxidizing. So as you look at these, this tube, my gosh, it looks like it just came off the show floor. It's in perfect condition. Okay, this boat has an extremely popular option today. It's called an extended swim platform, and you'll see how large the platforms are back here. Um, today, 2020, every pontoon we're stocking, almost every pontoon we're stocking, I should say, has an extended swim platform people are actually requiring it. Why is this extended swim platform so popular? Well, think about it. Um, first of all, in this particular model, we have a center gate, so we have to have a big platform back here so you can use the boarding ladder, board and debark the boat from the dock. If this were a side gate, we wouldn't have to have that big platform, but it's really nice to have because when you're getting the kids ready for the tubes or skis, you're tying up your boat, you're putting your cover on, you're checking your engine oil, there's a plethora of reasons why an extended swim platform on the back of a pontoon is very desirable. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that this boat has carpeting. So if you take a closer look at this carpeting, you'll see a little bit of darkness to a little bit of black in there. That black is mold, mildew. Now, it's easily cleaned up. We just take a pressure washer and hit it with a pressure washer and it comes right out. Sometimes if it's really bad, we'll take bleach bleachy water, I should say, and pour it on the carpeting to eliminate any more growth because that bleachy water gets way down to the pile of the carpet and kills that mold and mildew. In about 2014 or so, manufacturers started going to seagrass. This is a chunk of seagrass, and it's a PVC product. You'll see if we get a close-up. It's a woven product. It's woven PVC. It's extremely durable. It has a padding on the back to give you a little bit of cushion. Here's an example of that woven. Now because it's PVC, it doesn't mold, mildew, rot. It doesn't stain. You can't, I, I've not been able to get a fish, fish hook stuck in it. So it's extremely durable stuff. 
but back in 2014 or so, it was really expensive to do an entire boat. My gosh, it was like $3,000 extra to do an entire boat. Well, since then, slowly but surely, manufacturers have gone to that. As the price came down, they went to full seagrass flooring as standard equipment on all their boats. I don't know of anybody today that has carpeting as standard on their pontoons. Okay, starting up in the bow of the boat, um, the Sensation Limited, was, as I mentioned, was a step up from the Sensation. So some of the things that it has were the flex steel captain's chairs, which are a lot more comfortable than what the regular captain's chairs, which were in the Sensation or even the Sunspray. Same thing up in the bow. If you take a look at these cushions, we've got two chase lounges, we've got a gate filler seat. Now this bench seat is movable. This was an option that the customer bought when he bought this boat new. So you could take this bench seat, move it over to the side or move it into the back to make a U-shaped seating arrangement. Really thick, soft, cushy bench seats. My gosh, you sit in these things and you sit down and you sink down into them like you're in a big lazy boy in your living room. They are extremely comfortable. Um, Top-notch stereo speakers with stainless steel speaker grills instead of plastic speaker grills. We all know that down the road the plastic deteriorates and the speaker grills can crack and break. He also on this particular model bought a sliding table cooler. So inside that table is a cooler and you can move it around the boat because it's portable. He also bought the option of a pop-up changing room. Okay, this thing flips up and the curtain hangs down. Now, some people want a pop-up changing room, some people don't. Usually what we find is if you live on a lake, you're not gonna want a pop-up changing room. Yet if you trailer, you may want a pop-up changing room because you might want to put a porta potty in there and have a place to go to the bathroom. Now, as we move to the back of the pontoon, another one of the upgrades from a Sensation to a Sensation Limited back in 2010 was this was a much more deluxe console with a fancier stereo system than what the Sensation came with. Very nice looking console. Tilt wheel, all of our gauges, attack, a speedometer, trim gauge, fuel gauge, voltmeter, all right? A lot of pontoons, believe it or not, don't come with speedometers. Don't understand that, but sometimes they don't. We've got a control box. We've got a digital depth finder down here. We've got, of course, all of our switches. This was a really nice Sony sound system for back in the day, and there was your CD player. So this was a pretty decent sound system back in 2010. Of course, today they have better ones. Storage is underneath the console. That's pretty normal. But again, this is a much more deluxe console than what some of the lesser expensive models have. Okay, as I mentioned a minute ago, the captain's chairs are flex steel. Um, again, back in the day, these were really expensive captain's chairs. They're very, very, very comfortable. Um, they recline. There's a lever down here that you lift up and you can recline the backrest. There's a little lever here that you can lift the uh, pop-up armrest up and down. There's a seat slider under there, and obviously it swivels. So yeah, those captain's chairs are really sweet to have. Behind the co-pilot, we have a little table. All right. Now, again, this is a very, very popular seating arrangement. This is what's called an RF, rear-facing chase lounges. So in each corner in the back, we have two rear-facing chase lounges. Today, this is a very, very popular seating arrangement because it's a great conversation area for couples. The gals can lay here, read their book. They can watch the kids out on the tube or skis. It's a really a great seating arrangement back here. There's, again, two speakers back here, stainless steel speaker grills. Again, we have this center entry gate. This particular model came with a 12-foot bimini top instead of a nine foot. Where the Sensation would have a nine foot, the Sensation Limited has a 12 foot. Again, another upgrade. So I'm getting back to that point where I made earlier is if you're looking at a Saturn as a used pontoon versus a Buick 
at a used pontoon, yeah, the Buick is going to cost you more money than the Saturn is. Only makes sense. Okay, one of the largest deterrent of resale value is the condition of the vinyl. So often with some of the less expensive brands of pontoons that were sold back in the day, we see them coming in on trade with cracked and torn vinyl. Here's what happens. When a pontoon sits out in the sunlight, the ultraviolet light from the sun deteriorates the plasticizers in the vinyl that keep the vinyl soft and supple. And then it starts to get hard, brittle, and it cracks and tears. Now even back in the day, 2010, 2000s, a higher level quality pontoon is going to have some sort of ultraviolet light protectant built into the vinyl such as what this Premier has. So in this particular boat, we've gone through the whole entire boat and we've not found a tear, a crack, a seam coming loose, anything like that. Seams, for example, Premier used an ultraviolet light protectant thread to sew everything together. Therefore, our seams are not deteriorating from the sunlight, the thread is not deteriorating from the sunlight, and our vinyl's in perfect condition. Now, another thing that happens with carpeting, as I mentioned earlier, is mold and mildew in the pores of the vinyl. Now, vinyl is like your skin, it's porous. And if we covered this boat up with the vinyl, uh, with the carpeting wet, that humidity is going to stay inside the boat it's going to absorb into the pores of the vinyl and it's going to turn to mold and mildew. Now, the truth is, it is easily cleanable. We just take a mixture of 25% bleach and 75% water, spray it on the vinyl, walk away for 5-10 minutes, come back and hose it off. Then what we do is we treat it with a vinyl conditioning sauce, again, to apply more ultraviolet light protectant and also to keep the vinyl soft and supple. Okay, now on any used pontoon, particularly from a dealer, the dealer should go through the pontoon and make sure that all the accessories are in proper working condition, that the motor is in proper working condition, uh, the gear lube doesn't have any water in it, the engine oil is fresh, the stereo works, all four speakers work, all the navigation lights and gauges are in proper working condition. Uh, when buying a boat from a private party, yeah, often we see that those that people are selling their boats with some of these accessories not working properly. Um, so what, one of the things that we do when we get a trade-in is, in, is we do a trade-in appraisal and our technicians go through the whole entire boat. We have a checklist. And we check off everything that is or is not working properly and then uh, we go to fix it so that when we sell a used pontoon here in the shop, everything turns on, okay? Motor runs properly, depth finder turns on, gauges work. Now, sometimes on older used boats, um, some of these things don't work and we have to make a decision as to whether we wanna spend the money to fix it or not. If we don't fix it, we tell a customer right up front, hey, this particular item doesn't work, we're not going to fix it for the price that we're selling it for. If you want it fixed, uh, you can pay us to have it repaired or buy it as is. So I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch our little video. If you're interested in a pontoon, um, check out our YouTube page. So if you go to YouTube and you type in the search bar Family Marine Wilmer, um, you'll see our icon. You click on our icon and look at the uh, a top row of videos it says valuable buyer information and there's a plethora of videos in there that will help you decide which pontoon fits your needs the best what horsepower fits your needs the best whether you want a trailer or what type of trailer whether you want sea legs etc 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 so we're trying to help you determine what suits your needs the best so uh, the other thing is check out our website which is familymarineboats.com or give us a call. Our phone number is area code 320-222-2628. Thanks again for watching.